Hi, this is Nunzio from RPP, and today we're going to take a look at protecting the ulnar collateral ligament. This has been a recurring issue with the overhead throwing population, and in this webinar, we're going to take a look at the epidemic that continues to grow in alarming proportions year over year. We're also going to look at some of the big players anatomically that help stabilize and protect the UCL and some things we can do from a strength and mobility standpoint to give athletes a better chance for longevity in a sport that is so ballistic on the shoulder and elbow. So without further ado, let's get it going. A recent study in the physician and sports medicine showed that 29% of youth baseball players up to the age of 12 reported episodes of shoulder or elbow pain. Another report in the Journal of Arthroscopy noted 31% of pitchers up to the age of 22 have experienced an arm injury as well. And over a third of Tommy John procedures performed are on youth pitchers. So we can't have this discussion about UCL injury without first talking about overuse. Unfortunately, at a young age, the guys that throw the hardest get used the most. This really becomes a parent-coach discussion at some point, and these can get a bit ugly but you owe it to your kid to do so. Here's a graph showing the rise in Tommy John surgeries performed on youth each year by Dr. James Andrews. If we can learn anything from looking at this graph, it's that simply pitching and playing baseball without any type of strength and conditioning is not working. And that's what we're here to talk about today. The ulnar collateral ligament helps resist elbow hyperextension. These ligaments of the elbow are tough, flexible bands that connect the bones of the lower arm with the upper arm. They act as very sophisticated hinges, allowing the lower arm to bend and twist, powered by arm muscles. Pitchers are particularly prone to UCL problems. UCL injuries can range from complete tears to less severe damage, such as inflammation. And these tears can occur with overuse and wear and tear on the ligaments in the elbow and is most commonly associated with baseball pitchers and other athletes who perform frequent overarm movement. On a small note, I have to point out it's not always just caused from the stress of throwing. Things such as incorrect push-up technique or hypermobility in individuals that prevent, present with laxity or loose joints are particularly susceptible. But today, we're actually talking about the causes from throwing. Protecting the UCL ligament is most effectively achieved by addressing other body parts that can help absorb much of the stress from throwing. With that said, let's get into it. We need to stretch and or strengthen the periscapular muscles, the flexor pronator groups, which are the first responders to the UCL, and strengthen the core musculature. We also need to improve rotator cuff strength and firing time as well as shoulder mobility. And these are the topics that we're going to talk about today. Rehabilitation following a UCL reconstruction, depending on the severity, can be extremely extensive. Different PTs have different approaches, but any that are worth their weight will always be incredibly heavy on adequate function of the scapular stabilizers, as well as rotator cuff strength and timing, which we'll get into in a minute. Let's talk about the scapular stabilizers. The scapular stabilizers are working incredibly hard to appropriately position and stabilize the scapula on the rib cage in various positions so that it can provide an ideal anchor point for those rotator cuff muscles to do their job. They also help guide the scapula through the rect degrees of freedom. In our assessments, we generally look for 55 to 65 degrees of upward rotation. These muscles include and are associated with the following movements, the serratus anterior and pec minor for protraction, the trapezius, rhomboids, and levator scapula for retraction and elevation. Let's take a look at some things we can do training-wise to help build some better stability around the scap to help it become a bit more bulletproof. We wanna make sure on the push-up that there's no lumbar extension happening. And we wanna make sure that our arms are approximately 45 degrees out to the side. So we see about 45 degrees of daylight. We wanna make sure we're emphasizing that reach at the top to help get a bit more serratus involved and help get good centration um, of that ball and socket, good ball and socket congruency. I really like half kneeling reverse rows as an alternative to pull-ups for throwers. The half kneeling position helps keep the athlete's lumbar out of extension. And we emphasize the reach from pronation to supination, pronation on the reach and supination on the way back. 
really helps strengthen the trapezius and the rhomboid muscles. The next group we're going to address is the flexor pronator group. These are some of the first responder muscles that help stabilize and protect the elbow, especially in the layback position. These muscles are the flexor digitorum superficialis, the flexor carpi radialis, the flexor carpi ulnaris, and the pronator teres. They join in a common tendon to insert on the medial elbow directly atop the UCL. Because of their proximity to the UCL, these first responders are the primary stabilizers of the ligament. As the arm goes into pronation, this muscle group is turned on and helps to resist the valgus stress on the form as the elbow straightens and bangs across the midline of the body. So strengthening these muscles are paramount. The flexor digitorum superficialis allows the four medial fingers of the hand to flex. The flexor carpi radialis provides flexion of the wrist and assists in abduction of the hand and wrist. The flexor carpi ulnaris, these muscles flex the wrist and adduct it. And the pronator teres rotate the forearm palms down. This is also known as pronation. The first stretch we're going to look at is for the wrist forearm flexion extension. This is a basic stretch that we see done all the time. The one difference is when we do bring it into extension, we want to bring it pinky side to the inside for medial and index finger to the outside for lateral. We want to make sure we're doing this grip strength exercise on non-throwing days. We generally do it one time a week when we're in high intent throwing on non-throwing days and two times a week when we're ramping up or we're in a shutdown. This one is great for the pronator teres. We call them pronators as a result. And we wanna make sure that we're not using too heavy of a club. And if it is too heavy, you can choke up on this club. And if it's not heavy enough, you can go further out to the end, increasing the lever arm. For pronation supination, we're gonna use the same club. As you notice, the athlete is choking up a little bit more because at this angle, the club does feel a bit heavier. Working side to side, being careful not to over rotate on either side. If it starts to feel tight, that's your range of motion. That's where you go to. Here's another way to increase your grip strength, focusing more on the underside of the arm instead of the forearm with the wrist rollers. We do five five second holds and the resistance is adjustable on the end of the apparatus. Most guys, especially at higher levels, don't have rotator cuff strength issues so much as they have rotator cuff timing issues. Throwing is the single fastest motion in all the sports, so you better have a cuff that fires at the right time, more so than a cuff that fires strong but late. This is why when training the cuff musculature, it is important to improve both strength and firing time of the cuff. We use band ER and IR at 90 degrees because it better simulates the arm in the throwing position. This is great for strengthening the rotator cuff. But as far as working on cuff timing, we use band distractions with perturbations. This works great getting the athlete in the release position, have him retract the scapula, and then I'm shoving really, I'm I'm providing little shoves. I'm not just hammering and tapping the arm. I'm just moving it in all different directions, alternating the rhythm and the direction and having the athlete have to react to that neuromuscularly to work on the firing time of his cuff. We really use this a lot when throwing begins. The next piece of the puzzle is strengthening the core musculature. A lack of core control plays a major role in the anterior pelvic tilt extension in the lower lumbar, both of which can cascade into a number of mobility problems up the chain, such as limited shoulder flexion, limited upward rotation, and elbow valgus torque. That's getting in and out of layback. So getting your anterior core under control will help normalize the length and tone of the lats, and this will make getting overhead easier, and you'll feel stronger in that position. I love bird dogs because they're a big bang for the buck exercise. And when you add a trap raise with them, you're getting glenohumeral upward rotation while training contralateral stiffness by incorporating that opposite leg. 
Reverse alligator walks are another big bang for the buck exercise because they work on shoulder stability and ball and socket congruency while working on the anterior core. It's somewhat of a moving plank. We want to make sure we keep our arms centered under those shoulders, keep the lower back out of extension, and keep our abs nice and tight and engaged throughout the entire movement. Decreases in total range of motion, especially ER, of the throwing shoulder is a major risk factor for injury of overhead athletes and has been shown to place stress on the medial elbow. Even as much as a 5 degree deficit in total range of motion is associated with increased risk of UCL tears in baseball players. As far as internal rotation goes, studies by Garrison J.C. Cole et al. showed that decreases in internal rotation, while prevalent in throwers, may not be associated with increased injury risk of UCL. So, getting good external rotation can be a game changer. A few exercises we use when we see deficits in ER include soft tissue work to the pec minor and working on scapular retraction with posterior tilt with retraction to low rows. On the other side, gains in external rotation happen naturally for pitchers and baseball players from throwing during the season, but excessive gains in ER can create an unstable shoulder, forcing the elbow to have to take up the slack and placing added stress on the UCL. So monitoring throwing volume, as well as participating in a good in-season strength training program, complete with shoulder stabilizations during the season, can be a career saver. So to summarize, here's the protocol discussed in this PowerPoint, including set and rep schemes that we use here at RPP. Strengthen the periscapular muscles, wrist flexion and extension, strengthen the flexor pronators, improve rotator cuff strength and firing time, strengthen the core musculature, and improve shoulder mobility. We generally perform this circuit after the warm-ups or the ending of the warm-up. We'll do one to two sets of each exercise, two times a week when there's no throwing or we're in a shutdown or ramp up phase. And we'll do one to two sets only one time a week when high intent throwing, this includes pull downs, bullpens, and pitch design starts. We have to remember that throwing is strength training for the shoulder and the arm. So we need to watch the volume and this is why we cut it down to one time a week once harder throwing begins. Here's a list of all the equipment that was used in any of the exercises that you saw in today's PowerPoint. We sell it as a UCL protection program online on our website. Uh, you can go to it at the RPP Baseball Store and look under Arm Care. Well, that's it. I'd like to thank everybody today for tuning in. If you want to find out more about Arm Care, pitching, strength training, any kind of baseball training, you can go to RPP Baseball Training and Development, RPP Baseball. This is our address, 40 Eisenhower Drive, Paramus, New Jersey. There's our contact info. You can go to our website at www.rocklandpeakperformance.com or check us our Twitter page out or our Instagram page out as well. Thanks for tuning in and see you next time.